My single biggest investment today is a company called RCI Hospitality. I started buying shares of the company at around $15 per share. I saw it rise all the way to about $100. Today it's down at about $75. And I still think that it's one of the best investment opportunities in today's market with the potential to roughly tripling your money over the coming five years. Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about my largest investment, which is RCI Hospitality. I want to discuss its investment thesis and lay out the math of how I think it has the potential to roughly tripling your money over the coming years. But before I get into it, if you could please like this video, it really help me a lot, uh, especially this video, because I don't think that the algorithm of YouTube is gonna like it because of the nature of this business, you'll understand very soon. So again, thank you very much for your support. So RIC is the only publicly listed company that specializes in the acquisition and operation of adult nightclubs. RIC is not officially structured as a REIT, but it functions in a very similar way in that it's going to buy real estate, it's going to make improvements to it, and then it's going to operate this real estate to earn cash flow. You have REITs that buy industrial properties, some others buy apartment communities, some buy hotels. Those would probably be the most comparable to RIC because hotels are also management intensives and the REITs will typically take care of the operations. But the big difference between RIC and regular REITs is really in the economics, which are far superior in the case of RIC. The economics are far better here because the adult nightclub industry is very inefficient and highly fragmented. There are today a lot of club sellers because a lot of the owners are approaching retirement age. And this is not exactly the type of asset that you want to leave as a legacy to your next generation. But despite there being a lot of sellers, there are very few buyers. There are few buyers because buying and managing an adult nightclub club requires very unique skill set that most people simply don't have. You will need to be able to sniff out things like drug dealing, uh, racketeering, uh, even prostitution. And most people simply don't have this skill set. And even if you have it, you really want to deal with that headache. And then secondly, even if you had this skill set, are you really going to be able to buy these assets because of the reputational risk that there is? A private equity firm probably would have at least some limited partners that don't want you to buy the adult nightclub. Similarly, if you're a publicly listed company, let's say a hotel or a restaurant or other hospitality company, probably it would hurt your ESG. And just because of this, it doesn't make sense to buy these assets. And then if you're even a private individual and you have a bunch of money because you're a successful business owner, probably your partner or your family don't want you to get involved in this business. And so this is a huge opportunity for Rick because it's the only company with access to public capital at a relatively low cost. And so it's able to consolidate this space at really high rates of return since again, a lot of sellers, very few buyers. And so naturally the valuation multiples of these individual assets are gonna be really low. Historically, Rick has been able to buy these clubs at roughly three to five times adjusted EBITDA, which results in about 25 to 33% cash on cash returns, which is a huge spread of its cost of capital. Now let's take a step back and compare these economics to those of a regular REIT. So if you're a REIT, like let's use realty income as an example because it's one of the most popular REITs in the world. Its cost of capital is today about 5% and it's buying properties at a 7% cap rate. So there's a roughly 200 basis point spread that results in FFO per share growth even as their share count is expanding. Now compare that to RIC. Today's cost of capital is about 8% but it's buying properties at a 25 to 33% cash on cash return. And so the spreads are today depending on the asset about 1000 basis points or even 2000 basis points way more than that of a regular rate like realty income. And so as a result, REIT is able to grow far faster than most REITs. A REIT will typically be happy if it's able to grow by roughly 5% per year, but REIT has been able to grow its free cash flow per share by closer to 25% annually since 2016 when it implemented its new capital allocation policy focusing on accretive growth. This rapid growth has also then led to some multiple expansion. And as a result, the company has massively outperformed most stocks. I'll put a table somewhere on the screen comparing its historic returns to that of the SAP 500 and a few other popular stocks and you'll see that it's been really rewarding to own this stock. I've myself profited a lot as I said earlier my first purchases were at about $15 per share then I bought more in the 20s in the 30s in the 40s all the way much higher and today it's at about $75 and the interesting thing here is that I think that this is still the beginning because the company today owns about 50 clubs it has a pipeline of roughly 500 potential acquisitions 
acquisition targets in the US alone. I'm sure it could buy many more in Europe, in Canada and elsewhere. And so I think we're still early into this growth story. Typically a company with such attractive growth profile will trade at a high valuation multiple of let's say 20 or 30 times free cash flow. But today the company is still priced at just about 10 times free cash flow, even less if you take into account some of its recent acquisitions. So on a forward basis, I think it's closer to eight times free cash flow, which is a really low multiple for a company with a path to 20% plus free cash flow per share growth. And so now if let's say you expect the company to grow at about 20% per year annually over the next five years, at the same time, its valuation multiple grows from about eight to let's say 12, which is still very conservative for a company of this quality, you will essentially triple your money. And I know really well that this may sound unrealistic. Earning such returns is very unusual in the public market. Tripling your money in just five years is truly exceptional. But again, I don't think that these uh, numbers that are laid out here are unrealistic. On the contrary, the company has been growing even faster over the past five years. So that will be a downgrade from it. And growing the multiple to just 12 times, I think will be very well justified if they are able to keep on growing. By then the portfolio will be more diversified. It will be even safer. The company will have proven itself even more. I think that this will be rewarded with a higher multiple. And so that's the thesis in a nutshell. Reiki is a consolidator in a highly fragmented sector that's very inefficient for a lot of sellers, few buyers. These are attractive assets. They are on sale at very low multiples. Reiki is able to earn a huge spread of its cost of capital. And as a result, it's growing really fast. I would also add that the CEO has about 80% of his net worth invested in the stock. He's very shareholder friendly. He's buying back shares when the shares become discounted. And so these are the reasons why I'm so bullish on this stock and why it's my largest position today. Now that we've gotten so far, you may ask yourself, what's the catch here? Because obviously you're not going to earn such returns without there being some significant risks. From what I read online, it seems that most people who invest in RIC are worried about a recession coming our way. It seems that there is this perception that adult nightclubs are very cyclical, but I don't really agree with that one because a lot of scene industry is actually quite resilient to recessions and this includes even adult nightclubs you know alcohol sales even go up typically during recessions because people still want an escape and so they will still spend money on this type of experiences perhaps the average spend might go down but Rick has in the past been able to implement some strategies to then bring the traffic up to make up for the lower spend and so I'm not saying that this wouldn't impact the revenue of the company but I don't think that it would impact it nearly as much as many people appear to think. I think that the much bigger risk here to keep in mind is the possibility of adult nightclubs losing in appeal in the long run as a concept. Since this is such a large position for me, I've done a lot of work on this specific risk, trying to understand it better. Recently, I got the chance to fly to Southern Florida where I got to visit some of Rick's biggest nightclubs. I got to meet with the management teams and my findings were very positive. In short, I came to the conclusion that Rick's adult nightclubs are very unlikely to see a decline in their appeal in the long long run. On the contrary, their revenue on the same property basis is likely to keep on rising. And there is seven reasons for this. The number one reason is that the supply of such clubs is limited because they require a license. And today it's almost impossible to obtain a new license because nobody wants a new adult nightclub in their backyard. As a result, if you own a property and you have the license, this license is tied to the property as a reminder, you essentially have a local monopoly for this specific market. Then the second reason is really in the quality of the clubs that Rick is targeting. Today, there is a few thousand clubs roughly in the US. Rick's acquisition criteria has screened this down closer to 500. And so these are really some of the highest club in the nation. I don't see those going anywhere. I think this is a case of the weak getting weak and the strong getting stronger, just like in many sectors, you know, to take the example of mall REITs. In the past years, we've seen a lot of class C and class B malls close down. But as they close down, their traffic is then consolidated towards the highest quality class A malls. And so the strong get stronger than with higher traffic, higher sales. That's sort of what we're seeing also happen in the adult nightclub segment. A lot of the lower quality clubs with poor operators are closing down and this then benefits the highest quality clubs such as those owned by Rick. To give you an example of a club, Rick owns the Tootsies, which is the biggest adult nightclub in the world. It's down in Miami. I got to visit it recently. I'll put some uh, clip from the outside of the building, maybe from the inside even. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. But the point here that I hope is coming across is that Rick is not buying regular adult nightclubs. It's really buying the very best of the market. Then the third reason why I'm confident that Rick's assets are not going anywhere is that they are investing in rapidly growing markets. They're investing heavily in Florida, in Texas and Colorado. These are markets where population is growing, jobs are growing rapidly. And so the demand for people who want to party
party is always growing but again the supply of these establishments is limited because of the licenses and so limited supply growing demand very positive for Rick. Fourth reason the experience economy is growing faster than the regular economy more and more people today want to spend money on experiences rather than things especially in the post-covid world this benefits adult nightclubs such as those owned by Rick. Fifth reason people are today getting married a lot later this is very beneficial for Rick because it means that people will remain potential customers for much longer than in the past. Reason number six is the late night element. You know, if you go to a bar or a regular nightclub, typically they will close relatively early, let's say at, I don't know, 1, 2, 3 a.m. because of the licenses they have. The licenses of these adult nightclubs are typically superior. It allows them to stay open until up to 6 a.m. or even 24 7. And so this allows Rick to then get this late night crowd. If let's say you went to a club, it closed down at 1 a.m., but you're not ready to go home just yet. There are not many establishments that are still open at this time and so this key differentiator is also a durable competitive advantage for the establishments of Rick. And then the final reason why I think that these are durable assets is really because they're able to adapt. You may have noticed that I'm not even using the term strip club or gentleman club here. I'm using the term adult nightclub because they're quite a bit different from what you might have in mind at the moment. I would say that many of the clubs of Rick are much closer to a regular nightclub than a strip club and so it's more of a nightclub with additional entertainers, some shows, and then the late night element as well. Maybe you've been to Eleven in Miami. Uh, it's, it's not a club owned by Rick, but it's a famous club that gives you an idea of what you can expect with many of these clubs. And you know, Rick over time is going to keep on adapting if it's needed to keep getting the crowds. And so for all these reasons, I think that as of right now, the risk of these specific clubs facing a secular decline is relatively low. It's still a risk worth monitoring. I'm going to keep visiting many of the properties even later this year still to to do more due diligence perhaps i'll post some follow-up on this channel but again i think that this risk is probably smaller than many people may think today so to recap very shortly here here we have a stock with very attractive gross prospects durable competitive advantages modded assets a very low valuation a very shareholder friendly management team they have a great track record ever since they implemented their new capital allocation policy and so i think they are very early still in this growth phase to date may seem to many of you that's too late to invest in this story because the share price has already risen from this 15 to 75 dollars in my case uh, during my ownership but you know even today i keep accumulating more shares because at the end of the day this surge from 15 to 75 dollars per share is well deserved when you consider all the acquisitions that the company have made their cash flow has grown very significantly and so the valuation has not changed as much as you may think despite the now much higher share price and i think that we're still early and i simply cannot find many stocks with such rapid growth prospects at such low valuations. Finally, if you thought that this video was informative or really appreciate it, if you could please click the like button, it will really help me to get this channel in front of more people. And finally, if you want to learn more about Rick, please know that I've posted some exclusive interviews of the CEO and CFO of the company at Hired Landlord, which is my read newsletter. I'll put a link to a two-week free trial in the description of this video. Thank you very much for your interest and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.